Welcome to another installment of How Much Would I Pay, where I take a look at a classic transit bus that is for sale online and play the role of the buyer and come up with the price that I'd be willing to pay. So today's bus is a 1948 GM TDH 3207 Outlook bus, and it's for sale or was for sale on the Classic Cars uh, website. I don't have any affiliation with the website, nor do I have any affiliation with the purchase or the uh, uh, seller of this vehicle. Again, I'm just kind of uh, looking from afar and taking a look at this bus. So let's uh, look a little closer. So the description of this bus says it's a 1948 TDH 3207 transit bus, which makes it 30 feet long, originally from Madison, Wisconsin, uh, powered by a Detroit diesel 471 engine, has a Spicer 91 two-speed transmission, it has seating for 28, it's fully restored inside and out, and uh, they say has the Southern California Rapid Transit District Badging and Side Placard. So uh, they're saying that it's from Madison, but it has um, the livery and um, logos of a Southern California Rapid Transit. So I don't know if this bus uh, was operated by them. Uh, the description looking ahead doesn't actually talk about that. So uh, that's one question that comes up initially is this bus uh, painted uh, as it was at some point in its life, or was this kind of done by an owner decided to want to, you know, represent a vehicle of their personal interest or something like that? I, you know, I don't know. Uh, the interior has a period correct fare box, which is pretty nice. Uh, the original dashboard and instruments, speedometer, air pressure gauge, uh, doesn't say if they're all working, but, you know, we can make an assumption one way or the other about that. The last reported mileage was 730,862 miles, January 1st of 84. Um, I'm thinking that that may be the last time that this bus, you know, again, in the uh, early to mid 80s, the last of the old look buses were being retired. That was probably the last reported uh, mileage um, per its registration at that time. So I'm guessing it probably went out of service um, about that time or soon after that. Uh, serial number is, uh, again, TDH 3207-659, so that's good. So that'll help us out. We can take a look at the Ohio Museum of Transportation website and then uh, use that to figure out, you know, does that serial number match a little bit of the history that they've shared. So let's take a look at that. All right, so the serial number that they provided, uh, 659, does match up with the Madison Bus Company in Wisconsin. Uh, the original serial or the unit numbers were between 175 and 183. So assuming that those went in order with the serial numbers, you could figure out specifically what the original unit number was for this bus. And it was delivered in July 1948. Uh, taking a look at this whole list, which I don't kind of include in this screenshot, but this whole list also shows other units that are uh, preserved or at least have been saved. It doesn't describe... Uh, to what extent those vehicles are preserved, or they mint condition, or they just kind of uh, a rusting hulk somewhere. But um, this model of bus, it was TDH 3207, it was really early on in the transition of the original yellow coach buses being taken over fully by GM. I guess yellow coach was a, in some way partnered or a division of GM, but it became GM coaches. So. This is actually one of the um, earliest examples of a full-blown GM old look bus. So that actually is pretty unique. That should have been included in the description. I think that would be something to um, kind of focus on or highlight when you look at the history of this vehicle, um, because that's, in my opinion, would affect how much it's worth. So um, there are two others that are on this list for this particular unit. So it's one of just a handful of buses in existence, and you might be able to do some research to see if those buses still exist today and in what condition they are. Again, that would, again, play into how much this bus is worth. So let's take a look at the uh, pictures that were provided with it. So starting with the front right, you can see that the bus is in amazing condition. Uh, you know, even through the pictures, it comes across as being very well maintained. There's no apparent, you know, body rust or any sort of defects. It has original uh, side mirrors to it, which is really nice. The front emblem is actually in really good condition. Again, very commonly those are faded to almost nothing. <laughs> just clear plastic with a little bit of paint on the back. All the paint is just 
sun bleached out. So to see something that even has still a lot of red in it is pretty unique. It has a side destination sign, which weren't included on old look, all old look buses, but the fact that this one has it and it has, still has the curtain in it, if you will, or has the destinations, uh, that's a real nice perk, as well as the front destination sign. Uh, continuing down the right side, again, we have unit uh, 201. Um, we know, looking at the OMOT, the original unit number was somewhere in the high hundreds, like 175-ish. So this is probably to match with the uh, Southern California uh, Transit Company livery that they have on this. So does that match exactly? I don't know. Uh, but, you know, anyway, so there would be something to look into. Continue at the back right, um, looks in nice condition. And on the back left, again, all the marker lights are there. Uh, everything seems to be period correct. Uh, looking on the left side, uh, there's a little bit of pillowing, if you will, on the, uh, the door. You know, so that should be swing out. That is like the emergency door as Unit 23 has. So should the bus roll over onto the side that has the two normal entry and exit doors that the passengers could still get out and not have to squeeze through the little, the little windows here. Um, but again, just a small point. I, not really, it doesn't take away from it in any way. Uh, the front left, you can see the original side mirror. Um, it has a rather large, I'm guessing, vent on that side, something for the driver. It has these two little ones in the front. Um, the one on the left, or I guess the right side of the vehicle, you can only access by going through a panel in the front. You can't actually do it while you're driving. The one in front of the driver, I guess if you can kind of squeeze your foot, uh, in there between the pedals, you can kind of get that open, but to have something that's just to the left, and I don't know how accessible that is, but that would be nice if that's exactly what that is. Again, a better look at the front. You can see the GM logo on it uh, is in good condition, which is neat. Uh, it's interesting that the windshield wipers actually park the same way. Uh, you know, all the other transit vehicles I've ever seen or operated, the, they always park in the middle and then kind of swing out. These, it's almost like an automotive uh, configuration where they kind of park on one side with that. So um, it's kind of interesting. Or maybe maybe the windshield wipers are installed wrong and they could park in the middle. I don't know. But anyway, so this small point, interesting nonetheless. Uh, the front door, you can see they have a uh, uh, just a conventional master lock on it. So I'm guessing this bus was parked in an area that wasn't necessarily secure. So in order to protect the inside that they put this on, they could easily be removed. Or you could use it should you be parking it outside. There's a better look at the side destination sign. Uh, the right rear. Here's another unique um, badge, if you will. So these buses seemed, I don't know how many of them have it, but it's pretty common in old photos that I see that GM coach. And then this one isn't plastic. This is cast metal with a red epoxy uh, across the, you know, the front of it to create that logo. And these things must have been probably pretty collectible by people. They're not really hard to pop off. Um, so it's pretty common to see these A missing when they were being operated in those years. Um, and it's very uncommon to find one afterwards because again, A, they were gone in the first place and try to find one to replace it. Uh, so that's actually fascinating. I think that's kind of a neat little addition to this vehicle. The filler cap for the... Uh, Radiator, and again, it has a placard on there, original placard, so that's actually a nice little bonus. Uh, the wheels look to be in good shape. The, uh, the rubber skirt seems to be in nice shape as well. So here's the driver's area. The uh, period uh, fare box, again, I have no idea if this is actually period, and to what period, if it was a 1948 bus, and then was in service, let's say, through the uh, 1970s, what period in its operation does this match? And I don't know, uh, be worth looking into, but again, as long as it fell within those three to four decades, it's period and it would work. So kind of a nice little addition to this. And you can see kind of the uh, Art Deco style to the instrument uh, cluster, as well as kind of like these little side, you know, uh, accents, which is actually really neat. Those definitely didn't exist in later GMs. So here's the uh, the footwell for the driver, the, the gas, the brake. It has a floor. So these first two right buttons are the floor buttons for turn signals, left and right. 
Um, and then the one on the left is, is the uh, high beams. Um, as far as I know, this was only uh, in new look buses, at least those are the ones I've only ever seen are new look buses. So I'm guessing this may be a modification. I like the modification because, man, it's so much nicer to keep your hands on the wheel while you're turning and you can adjust turning on and off uh, the, you know, the turn signals or even do a quick, you have to only put your head down to look for the switch to do the high beams. You can just kind of kick the floor and bring those on. So not, probably not original, but I like that. Uh, the parking brake to the left and the gear shift, and I'm guessing that this is the, um, the, the switch to go ahead and add air to the air system uh, for the doors up front to allow those to be operated. It does have a seat belt, which I see, which is nice because, you know, under good braking, you know, you have a nice vinyl seat, you kind of just slide off the front of it. I think this bus needs a seat belt for that, you know. I don't want to end up eating the steering wheel because someone in front of me decides to brake a little hard. Here's a nicer look at the instrument cluster. Again, it has all these really cool switches down below. These uh, first two gauges on the left are from New Look buses, the speedometer, as well as looks like oil pressure. Um, again, it doesn't take away from it. You might be able to find replacements on those, which would kind of uh, complete the look. Uh, seating in the back, wherever the seats are there, they all look to be in nice condition. Uh, kind of overhead of the rear door, here's the mirror that the driver could kind of look in his mirror and see if anybody's standing in the rear stairwell before he closes the door. That would normally be turned and facing the front, it's a little sideways here. Uh, the seat just behind the driver. And here is uh, some sort of placard, you know, some sort of... Uh, um, board that has information that looks like it just mirrors exactly what was in the uh, uh, description on the sale, being that the model number and all that stuff. So um, Department of Transportation Madison it has that logo, but then the paint job on the outside doesn't match that. So uh, I don't know if it's possible to find out what the Madison livery looked like and change it to that if you wanted. But anyway, so that's kind of the end of all of the pictures. A nice collection. I thought it'd get a good... Uh, a good breakdown of the condition of the vehicle as much as you want to gawk from afar. So how would I uh, rank this bus? So the factors that I'm looking at when I'm considering how much I'd be willing to pay, first of all, is the condition of the bus. On a scale of one to five, you know, one being slightly better than parts and five being mint condition, I'm going to give this a five. There's small points that if you really wanted to have one that is absolutely, you know, correct in every small detail like the speedometer and whatnot, that's fine, but it's a small point. This is a five out of five. Uh, restorability, again, one would be, you know, very hard to restore or needs a lot of work, and obviously five would be little to no work and easy parts. This is a five. There's very little that you would have to do. Uniqueness. Uh, so this is really how unique is this bus? What, um, would separate this bus from the average bus. Most buses were just general vehicles that were used on city streets for 10 years and then retired. Um, little of those vehicles have a story that's worth, you know, telling or makes them unique. But this one actually being perhaps one of the oldest, if not the oldest or best restored old GM old looks, um, that in itself is a huge thing. So it maybe take a little bit more research to figure out um, how unique that may be, but you know, indicators are pointing towards that being that case. So out of one to five, I would probably give this the four. Again, you know, what would make it a five on that scale is that it would have to have the documentation to kind of back that up. I mean, even without it, it may even slip back a little bit, but um, I'm leaning more towards the higher end of that scale. Uh, the provenance of this vehicle. So again, this is, how, like, when it comes to antiques, how well is its journey uh, documented? Um, you know, a piece of art from the original, from the painter to you as the collector. Same thing for these uh, transit vehicles. So the day it left Pontiac, Michigan, and it shows up at your doorstep, how well can you document where it's been? So knowing the serial number, verifying that that serial number is correct, it should be uh, probably stamped somewhere else on the engine or maybe somewhere else on the frame. Um, but if those match, 
That goes a long way to do that. It'd be nice to have maybe some paperwork or even a photo or two if you could find it in its original um, operation in Madison or if it did actually serve in um, California. So I think there's some opportunities for that to be higher, but I'm going to give that a two out of five with hoping that it can, you know, it can kind of move up a little bit more. So that gives it 16 out of 20 in my score, which is above, well above average, if you will. This vehicle is, is really nice, and there aren't many that show up for sale that are kind of turnkey when it comes to a restored transit bus, especially one that's in, uh, still in the transit configuration, hasn't been stripped out and turned into an RV. So the last thing I like to look at is what I think is the wow factor. Does this vehicle have something that plays to my biases? Uh, you know, there's that vehicle that would be uh, have a connection to a family history or a particular state that you're from or a transit company that you have an affinity for or anything like that. And few of those things with this vehicle's history, you know, speak to me. I, I don't have any you know connection with anything in Madison or even California. Um, but the fact that this is perhaps one of the oldest surviving old look buses, that in itself for me is actually very intriguing. I like that. So if the documentation could be substantiated and there's a little bit more to kind of place it in time and you could figure out exactly how many of these old ones are left, I'm giving this a solid three out of five, possibly a little bit higher if uh, research were able to, again, kind of back that up. So not bad uh, for a vehicle. So again, like I said, this is basically a turnkey turn vehicle, so how much would I pay for it? Again, my scale from zero being a bus that's probably less than scrap value, and on the highest end, we're looking at $100,000 because that is what the sale value was for the uh, bus that was used in the movie Speed. That is the only substantiated sale of a vehicle like this that I've I have found record of. So that's kind of where it has to fall. Um, now granted, you may be willing to pay more than that, but that's kind of what I'm using for my bookend. So where does this vehicle fall on that? The, the asking price was $75,000. I think that's a very fair price. But actually, I would probably be willing to pay a little bit more and say $80,000 for this vehicle, just because the condition that it's in and that it has some you know, unique history to it. So there you go. So that's my take on this 1948 uh, Old Look bus. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Am I missing something? Is there something in this bus's story that makes it more or less valuable? Um, is there some glaring error in the restoration of it that maybe I don't know about? But if you find something or just want to let me know how much you'd be willing to pay for it, you know, go ahead and leave those uh, in, down in the comments there. So Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to, throw a subscribe on there if you haven't. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching.